Hey guys, hope you're going well. We're back for another episode recap of Penny Dreadful. This week it's episode seven called Ebb Tide. Just when I started filming, there's this really loud chainsaw going on outside. This was a really, really exciting episode story-wise because it has really brought together so many of our individual storylines and linked everything in a really exciting way. Things that were happening over in America with Ethan's side story and confronting his father. Hecate is dead, so she's out of the picture. Inspector Rusk is dead, he's out of the picture, so Ethan is kind of off scot-free. He also avoided having to kill his own father by his own hand even though that was his absolute intention when the time came to it he just wasn't able to pull the trigger so so Malcolm stepped in and took that burden from him. Kayetne still has a part to play and while Ethan tries to separate himself from his Apache father he they're bound together and there's no separating them now. Kayetne says that he will follow Ethan wherever he chooses to go next. He he then has a vision, a very convenient vision, mind you, and Kayetne first has an impression while they are still in America and then later again on the boat he's able to actually appear in a form in an apparition to Vanessa and they have a conversation of sorts and that's when he fully realizes that Vanessa is quite far gone and they really have to make tracks to get to her in time. Vanessa back in London, she's still in this naive state, although I think maybe you could argue that underneath she realizes that the monster that is hunting her has become a lot closer than she is willing to admit to herself. In the last episode when she said the phrase, you know, every time I've given my heart it's led to catastrophe. She gives herself over to Dr. Sweet in that moment and they do spend the night together, but I don't know, she's living in this bubble world and almost not seeing the truth even though it's right in front of her. It's the new character Catriona Hardigan who arrives at the mansion one evening and sees Vanessa. They share more information and updates on the search and research into Dracula and where he might be and how he might be stalking her and getting closer to her and I thought that was really really interesting. Catriona also revealed more of her own personal character that she probably has got quite a bit of fight in her and I think that she'll be sticking around for the final battle I think that I think that she's really got a big part to play even though she's trying to stay out of it and she says very clearly to Vanessa that this is her fight and that you know she's just bringing the information but it's not her battle to fight but I do think that we have not seen the last of her and I think she will play out in a big way. So so many strong strong female characters with this addition of Kat or Catriona along with Vanessa and moving over to Lily and Dorian's side story which is getting so exciting. There's been a slow build up this season but this episode things really really became apparent to Dorian as he's sitting there at this long long dinner table with sort of 50 this gaggle of 50 women all sitting around laughing and drinking and he is just totally outnumbered. He says to Lily in confronting her that he's just bored. He's not really interested in her revolution and doesn't feel that it's exciting and that they had the power to really reign this darkness over the world and instead she's just inspiring this upstart of prostitute uh, of a prostitute army. So in a twist of events that I think we all did see coming, Dorian calls in his favour upon Frankenstein and they kidnap Lily and take her to Bedlam where Dr. Jekyll is waiting and they intend to inject a serum into her to make her more ladylike and return her to her former more happy docile state. This moment absolutely floored me. I'm pretty sure I physically said out loud no way because I was in shock when Lily is on the floor in the hospital. The three men standing over her, Frankenstein, Jekyll and Dorian. She is chained by the leg to a chair and she's sitting on the floor looking up at them and Victor tells her with all the love in the world, the misplaced love, that he's going to turn her into a proper 
woman with calm, poise and serenity. The audacity of these three men to stand above her and tell her that she is not a proper woman, that what she is doing is unseemly and not worthy of her gender makes my blood boil so incredibly much. At this point, I really don't know if they're going to go through with injecting the serum into her. I suspect they will, whether or not it will work the way they intended or not. Who knows? I also am very interested to see if Justine is going to come to Lily's rescue in some way or how Justine and Dorian will end up facing off because there is a lot of unresolved issues going on between the two of them. So that was the linking up of Lily and Dorian's storyline to Frankenstein and Jekyll. So now all those characters are together. On the other side, Vanessa has been reunited in some sense with Caliban or John Clare. I really like the fact that they had a conversation together and that Vanessa addressed the elephant in the room and said, don't you remember me from the banning clinic, from the asylum? Because that would have been really... <laughs> I would have not liked that writing if they had not addressed that now that Vanessa has the new memory of her past in the asylum. And then of course to wrap up the episode, Vanessa has finally given in to the darkness. She is sick and tired of being good, of walking the path of loneliness and righteousness and whatever that is. The fact that Dr. Sweet or Dracula is now out in the open. She knows who she is, he is, and she was able to confront him directly face to face. And everything he said to her, his words, they even lured me in. I, he's, but he's definitely a sweet talker. <laughs> he's not called Dr. Sweet for nothing. So that's it now. Vanessa has turned to the dark side. She has given her submission to Dracula to become his partner, to let him serve her. And when Ethan, Malcolm and Kayetne return to London next episode, next week, I think that they will be very distraught to find out the state that they've left her in, that they've abandoned her essentially when they left at the end of last season. And now that they return, it's too little too late. They are my thoughts on this week's episode, Ebb Tide. Make sure you leave me comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought of this episode. Thank you so much for watching guys and we will be speaking next week. Bye.